Hey everyone, it's CAGM, and, well, we're finally here to predict the characters that I think will be in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighter Pass Volume 2, except for the ARMS character. I'll tell you who I think it is, unless it hasn't been announced already by the time this video gets uploaded. Um, so yeah, it's, like I said with the Street Fighter video, it's kind of surprising I didn't do this before Street Fighter, but I did promise that I'd eventually get to Smash Bros. and, well, here we are. This video will basically just be like the Street Fighter video. Um, the first five characters will be characters that I personally want to be in the game, but I don't think will happen. And character, and the last five characters will be characters that I think will happen, and I still want them. Um, and also, the order is going to be who I think will be Fighter Pass 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Um, and since, I, honestly, it was kind of hard to think of this list, so there isn't going to be any honorable mention. Just keep that in mind. And also, before we get started, I personally do think the character we are going to get for the armed character is going to be Min Min. We'll probably get like some uh, hero type thing with extra characters. We'll probably get like Ribbon Girl, I mean Twintel, Ninjara, something like that. I don't know. It's crazy how many choices there are. Basically any characters in the running. But regardless, let's just get started with characters that I think um, probably won't make it in, but I still want to happen. The first character is going to be Impa. Now, the Zelda series is pretty bad in terms of character representation. The only characters who are represented are characters who are part of the Triforce. We have three Links, two Zeldas, and Ganondorf. But one of the most important characters in the entire franchise is Impa. She was basically the one who taught Zelda to be Sheik. So she is pretty important and she also saved Zelda when Ganondorf was trying to take over Hyrule at the beginning of Ocarina of Time. So. Um, she really deserves to be in the game, and she has a ton of other games that they could take moves from, like Skyward Sword, and probably the game that they'll take the most from is Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is a huge game, and there's so much stuff that they could pull from it that it's insane. I would think uh, her design would come from that game too, because while Ocarina of Time and Skyward Sword aren't bad, they're just pretty terrible. And she, I definitely do think she looks the best in Hyrule Warriors, and so do a lot of the other characters. Regardless, she has a ton of moves that they can pull from that game, as well as create new moves like they did with Sheik. So, I think Impa would be really good for Smash Bros. But, personally, I really think they're kind of done with Zelda till, who knows, if we get another game after this. I don't know why people don't want Bandana D in the game, but I personally do. Uh, just like the Zelda series, Kirby is also very underrepresented when it comes to basically anything. I understand that Sakurai doesn't want to have a ton of bias towards his series that he created, but three characters and a couple stages and not a whole ton of stuff in terms of like music and spirits, it's actually kind of insane how underrepresented it is considering how much he gave love to Kid Icarus Uprising with in Smash 4 because he made that too. I understand that, like I said, it's the bias, but still. Um, most of the things that are in the Kirby series are from the games that he developed before he left HAL Laboratory, which were Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Adventure, and Kirby Superstar, which is where most of the stuff comes from. Bandana D would be a great representation for the newer side of the Kirby series, and we already know what Bandana D could do because of Super Smash Bros. 2 and how his great moveset could be put into Smash Bros. So, and besides, we get a spear user for the first time. That'd be awesome. Bandana D would be great. Trust me, guys. He would be good. Really violent stuff warning for the next character. I think you can tell who it's gonna be. If I had to pick one more fighting game character to be put into Smash Bros, my pick would go to Scorpion. And I know, I know, it's probably the most violent character we'd ever get put into Smash Bros. Even though we have characters like Snake, Joker, Bayonetta, I get it. But Scorpion has got to be the worst defender of them all. I don't care. Scorpion is amazing, and he represents what basically made fighting games popular along with Street Fighter 2. Um, without Scorpion and Mortal Kombat, I don't think fighting games would be nearly as popular as they are, and if we want to put one of the most influential fighting game characters into the biggest fighting game of all time, I mean, that's just a match made in heaven. We got Ryu, who also contributed to help make fighting games very popular, and Terry, who basically made Smash Bros. a thing after Sakurai wanted to make a game of his own after playing uh, Fatal Fury, I mean, 
the last big fighting game character we need is Scorpion. Unless we got, like, a Tekken character. Which would still be cool. I, I just want another fighting game character, honestly. And Scorpion would be the best pick. They would obviously just have to tone him down just a teeny bit. What once was Nintendo's biggest rival, now one of their best friends. And even then, they still don't have a whole ton of great characters in their big crossover game. I'm, of course, talking about Sega and their Sonic franchise and how it's represented in Smash Bros. and not very good at that. I understand how people hate Sonic, but trust me, Tails would be a much different character and he'd play much differently. I know people, a lot of people want Shadow before, the, before he got deconfirmed as an assist trophy, and I can tell um, because he was probably one of the most characters that people said, yeah, this is going to happen along with Ken. But Shadow did not make it in, surprisingly, and to this day, even after three games of Sonic being in the game, he is still by himself with no other uh, fighter to be with him. We got Knuckles at E3 2018 as an assist trophy, which made people think we'd get Shadow, but we still didn't, which is why Tails still has a chance to make it in, because uh, the only thing that makes him possibly deconfirmed is a spirit, which we still don't know if that deconfirms spiders or not, so I still think Tails could be in. He could use his mech suit, or he could use his gadgets. Super Smash Bros. Crusade and Super Smash Bros. 2 both show those sides of Tails, how they could work perfectly, and besides, like I said, he probably wouldn't be as annoying as Sonic. He'd maybe just have one spin dash move. I don't care what anyone says about assist trophies deconfirming fighters. If I could have one character in the game, no rules at all, I would pick Isaac from Golden Sun. Now, I sound like a fake fan when I say I've actually never played Golden Sun, but I don't care. I'm going to get there one day. Hey, maybe I'll stream it. Tell me, because if people tell me, I may. I don't know. But still, Isaac is my number one pick when it comes to basically Smash Bros. characters. No rules um, applied. I get it, he's an assist trophy. You should have seen my face when he got confirmed as an assist trophy. But still, Super Smash Bros. 2, once again, shows off how uh, Isaac could work in the game. And it is just beautiful. He could use the hands and... The, the ropes and the vines. I hope those are what they're called because I sound like a fake fan and I kind of am, but still, I don't care. Isaac would still be an amazing choice and would represent the Game Boy Advance era for Nintendo. And besides, we can slide in one more RPG protagonist, even though we have a couple in the uh, probably happening list. I don't care. Isaac needs to happen one day, which he probably won't. Now it's time to look at the characters who I think will be in the Challenger Pack 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And I still want them in. Who I think will be for Challenger Pack 7 is a Pokemon from Sword and Shield. And of all the Pokemon I think it could be, do I think it'll be a starter? Toxtricity? I think it'll be Urshifu. Urshifu would definitely be a great representation for Sword and Shield. And a bit of promotion for the DLC a bit. He has two forms, the Single Strike and the Rapid Strike mode. So probably half his moves could be a one hit powerful move and the other hit could be multiple smaller hits. That would be a great dynamic for a character like Urshifu and besides the only legendary we have as a Pokemon as a playable fighter is Mewtwo and Mewtwo well is Mewtwo so um, I think this would actually be a good fighter because most legendary Pokemon are either Quadruprints or can just not really fight as well as you think they'd be because they fly or something like that. Urshifu is much different because he would play probably like Incineroar and I'd say Lucario in one character. So Urshifu would be amazing and a great way to represent Generation 8. This is another highly requested fighter and probably the most highly requested fighter, um, probably the entire Ultimate career I I'd say, and that goes to Sora. Now. I've never played, I, I have played one Kingdom Hearts game, which was Chain of Memories, for a little bit, probably an hour. I did enjoy it, but I still think Sora would be an amazing pick for the game. I know Square Enix is Square Enix with how much they represented Cloud and Hero. They wouldn't even let them use their official names, for God's sake, but Sora would probably be a very good character to put in the game. And you may say, gross, Disney wouldn't be able to do anything about it and they wouldn't let him in because that's Disney. Well, you're wrong because Bowser is literally in Wreck-It Ralph, which was made by Disney. So, there's no way Disney wouldn't let Sora in. Besides, that is amazing promotion for Kingdom Hearts and, well, the new stuff they're gonna put at Disneyland and Disney Plus. So, I mean, 
Smash Bros. is a pretty good way to promote anything, and if you want to promote something like Disney stuff, I think Sora would be a good choice. And besides, he's probably one of the most highly requested fighters of all time, so I'd sure make a lot of fans happy. Challenger Pack 9 is a bit of a personal pick for me, and that goes to Rex from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I enjoy- I, I wouldn't just enjoy, I loved Xenoblade Chronicles 2 when I played it, and yes, I'm a fake fan of Xenoblade because I've never played the first one, and I'm sure it's an amazing game, I want to buy it eventually, and I will, but Rex would be an amazing choice for Xenoblade Chronicles. Sakurai said he couldn't quite make it into the roster because the planning was already done by the time the game was announced, but they put in buy lists even though it came out in 2019 and Xenoblade came out in 2017. So this is this has no excuse to put Rex in the game. They can put a character who was released six months ago, they can put a character who was released almost three years ago. Rex has any 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 reason has no reason to not be in the game. He can switch between Pyra and Mithra probably, maybe. I guess Mithra is kind of a spoiler, but at the same time, you know, maybe not. It's only in like chapter three or four, I think. And, um, I think they have a great moveset, sort of like Minato, but maybe Pyra can be, like, more, more knockback, less damage, and, uh, she'd probably be more damage, less knockback, and Mithra would be more knockback and less damage, so basically just be Buster and Smash Minatos, just put on another character. And I feel like that'd be a more balanced version of Shulk, and besides, it'd still make a lot of people happy. This was a character who a lot of people thought would be put into as Challenger Pack 5, which is Dante from Devil May Cry. Now, Devil May Cry is also a bit of a pretty gory series. Not much more than a Mortal Kombat, that's for sure. But he was still probably the most rumored character to be as Challenger Pack 5 when Sakurai held up the 3 on the uh, Smash Bros. thumbnail when everyone thought that was related to Devil May Cry 3 and how it's coming to the Switch and how there was news of about Devil May Cry 3 on the exact same day, so a lot of people thought that meant Dante was in the game until it was Violet, which really sucks, but I still think Dante has a good chance to make it in. The only Capcom characters we have are Ryu and Ken, as well as Mega Man, and if you had to pick one more character to choose to represent Capcom, you'd probably say Resident Evil, but they got confirmed as spirits. So it's Dante, definitely, and besides, Dante's big sword could definitely help him out in a lot of ways, but he would still be a great choice, and probably in. I'm just saying he's probably gonna be in. If Challenger Pack 11 is the last character added to Smash Ultimate, and Smash Ultimate is the very last Smash Bros. game, which it isn't, Sakura said that last Smash Bros. game would be Brawl, and then Smash 4, and then Ultimate, so it probably isn't, but I still think Smash Ultimate or Smash Bros. entirely will never be as big as it is right now. So, if I think there would be one last character to be put in the game that could represent gaming as a whole and be the last character ever added to this to the biggest crossover in, in video game history, it would have to be Minecraft Steve. I'm totally confident Minecraft Steve will be put into Smash Bros. It, Minecraft is now the best-selling game of all time, and has been released on literally every single platform you could ever think of. So, if there was one character you had to think of to represent gaming as a whole, of a character that already isn't in Smash Bros, you'd have to pick Minecraft Steve. Or Fortnite, but shut up. I mean, Minecraft Steve basically encompasses what gaming is, and the game still gets updates after 10 years of it being around. And besides, all the new things they add can definitely be put into a moveset for him. It sounds kind of hard to do, considering of how his blocky aesthetic is, but when you think of that, you remember that they put Mr. Game Watch in the game. So, Minecraft Steve has no reason to not be in the game, and I personally do believe if he is the very last character added to this game, it's gonna be him. I mean... A lot of these other characters definitely do represent a, one, their own part of gaming, but Minecraft Steve has his own place in gaming by himself. I mean, he is on another level of gaming that all the boomers recognize from their 8-year-olds playing the game on their computer. I mean, you just can't get anywhere else but with Minecraft Steve. I know I went on a little bit of a tangent on the last one, but I swear it's a good choice. You can tell I was a bit more passionate about the Smash Ultimate Fighter Pass Volume 2 more than Street Fighter 5 Season 5, but that's because, you know, I've been around the Smash scene for 
quite a few years now compared to Street Fighter, so I have a bit more knowledge on that. And it still is harder because you can't say you want, like, Young Link in the game because every other character is already in the game, so you have to think of new characters, and that can be a bit hard. As for Street Fighter, you can always just say, hey, I want maybe Guy in the game, you know, just an older rep, but we may still get new characters. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a very fun video to make because, I mean, hey, Smash Bros. is probably my favorite franchise of all time, and... It's an amazing game to speculate on who will be in the game, and if this is the very last Smash Bros. game, and if it's the very last Smash Bros. DLC or whatever, thank you very much, Sakurai, and everyone who worked on this game. It's It's been an amazing ride to be part of the series, and um, just have a break, honestly. Just, just take a break. But with that, uh, like and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in another video.